Welcome home to Open Your Reality. A lot of people wonder what happens in the afterlife. What really happens to our consciousness and soul after the death of our physical body? I know it's a morbid subject, but it's one we should all know about, as everyone will go through the death process one day. Hopefully not anytime soon though. In this video, I'm going to take you through the process of what happens to your soul immediately after death and into the afterlife. If you're new to this information, you might be quite surprised as to what really happens. And if you're already familiar with the death process and afterlife, the information here may answer some remaining questions you've had and reaffirm your beliefs. I want to preface this video by saying the point of it is not to argue the case for life after death. I take the approach that there is an afterlife, as there is overwhelming evidence for it. For my money, there is no doubt about it, so we shall start on that level. If you'd like to know where my information comes from, I've listed a source list in the description area. I'll just add that my information comes from several longtime researchers with first-hand accounts by thousands of independent people reporting the same experiences under hypnosis and some with out-of-body experiences. Even if you don't believe in an afterlife or you're an atheist, this will still be a fascinating video to watch. But most of you who watch my channel are quite advanced spiritually, so I think you know the score. Now that we've discussed the preliminaries, let's explore what is perhaps the most fascinating subject under the sun what happens to us after death? Immediately following the death of the body, and sometimes before impending death, the individual's consciousness will float up and outside the body, usually hovering over it. This is why some people who've had near-death experiences report having seen and heard all that was going on while they were unconscious. The only difference in a final death is that the consciousness does not return to the body. In either case, it's interesting to point out that any physical suffering a person was going through in their body near the time of death completely vanishes. Basically, once the consciousness has exited the body, all the pain associated with the physical is gone. In its place is a feeling of lightness and relief. In other words, Whatever physical limitations were imposed on that person, whether it be a missing limb, blindness, a degenerative disease, have no effect whatsoever on the consciousness when it leaves the body. Many people who have suffered close to death feel rejuvenated and amazed after leaving their body. They often look down upon their body as an empty vessel that's no longer important and no longer identify with it. Now. What happens next really depends on the way a person dies and their level of soul evolution. All souls usually fall into one of three categories. There are the beginner souls, who have not learned much since their creation. This is either because they've only had a few incarnations, or they may have sufficient incarnations to evolve, but for one reason or another, haven't learned the lessons they need to. The next stage of soul evolution are the intermediate souls. These are souls who've most likely had more incarnations than a beginner soul. Intermediate souls have a better picture of what's happening after death and don't resist the death process as much as new souls. The last type of soul is the advanced one. These are very rare around the earth. These souls usually have no friction after the death process and go directly to the afterlife. They have a very clear understanding of what's taking place. Advanced souls usually return to a physical body only to be teachers and guides. All of the ascended masters that I've spoken about in other videos are advanced souls of the highest level. The topic of soul types is very interesting. I may do a video exclusively on it if enough people are interested. Let me know in the comment section. Anyway, after a beginner or intermediate soul has died, they may stay around their body for a few hours to a few days. 
This is on average because some souls can get trapped on the earth plane for months or years, and we call these people ghosts. In many penitentiaries, the inmates will tell you that they can hear and sense the ghosts of other inmates who were brutally murdered within the prison walls. But ghostly phenomenon can happen anywhere, and it's real, just in case you were wondering. Most souls stay around the body to make sure their family and friends are doing well, despite the circumstances. Others want to see who attended their funeral, or if their body is being cared for in the way it should. And some souls have a very strong attachment to people or possessions they are not ready to give up yet. The strange thing is, the departed soul is still conscious, but hasn't fully accepted their death yet. Or they may be so disoriented, they think it's a dream, a hallucination, or not really happening to them. But after some time, their spirit guide will gradually coax them to the light. This is the point in which the departed soul goes towards the tunnel that we've all heard about. By going through the tunnel, the soul separates from the earth plane. This tunnel is much like a wormhole or black hole in space. As the soul moves through the tunnel, it sees a bright light at the end of it. I personally believe that this tunnel was created as a way for the soul to know it's transitioning from one life to another. Life will certainly continue for the soul, but no longer on earth, at least for the present. As the soul moves rapidly towards the light, it gets bigger and bigger. The departed soul can then begin distinguishing one or more people standing in the light. At first vague, they soon grow clearer. These people are usually relatives who had earlier passed away. In some cases, they are dear friends, soulmates, or all of the above. The recently departed soul is greeted by these people and quite an emotional reunion takes place. Any fear or anxiety the departed soul was feeling at this point disappears. In its place is an overwhelming sense of love and joy. At this point, the soul wishes to remain in the light with its loved ones forever because of the incredible feeling of oneness it's experiencing. But unfortunately, the scene is short-lived. After around 15 minutes of this, the relatives withdraw and tell the departed soul it will be assisted in crossing over by its spirit guide and that they will all meet again sooner. The loved ones disappear and the spirit guide, who was in the background all along but often goes unnoticed, now steps forward to help the newcomer. The testimonies of patients under hypnosis are quite coherent when it comes to describing the spirit guide who can be a male or female. The spirit guide is always very loving and helpful, and the departed soul feels like it has reconnected with an old, loyal friend. It will likely feel this way because certain spirit guides are dedicated to certain souls. Hence, in most cases, we meet the same guide every time we die. Eventually, the spirit guide brings all souls, regardless of experience, to a central point in the spirit world called the staging area. Here souls may be told to stand in line and wait. According to Tom Campbell, this is just a way for souls to feel like they are checking into the spirit world and another step to show the transition process. Once past this orientation station, there seems to be no further detours for being fully in the spirit world. Apparently, Large numbers of returning souls are conveyed in a spiritual form of mass transit. Spirits are brought in, collected, and then projected out to their proper final destinations, which is usually their soul group. I'll get more into this shortly. The most outstanding characteristic of the spiritual world is a continuous feeling of a powerful mental force directing everything in uncanny harmony. People say this is a place of pure thought. Also, in the spiritual world, there is no need to do any of the things we do on earth to survive, like eat, work, or pay bills. This is a place of mental energy. Okay, this video is getting to the point where I have to stop here. I try to cap these videos around 10 to 12 minutes because it takes me 10 to 12 hours of editing to complete them. And as I do other things, 
That's about all the extra time I have in two to three days to complete a video. I hope you understand. If this video does well, and a lot of people like it, I'll be glad to do a part two of it, as well as a separate video on the soul types. I would also like to do a video on twin souls, or soulmates, later this month. There's a lot to talk about. Anyway, please share this video, consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell to be alerted to future videos. Finally, if you wish to donate to the channel through my Patreon page, the link is below. Thank you. And thank you for all your kind support. See you in the next video, my friends.